Welcome to the show. It's Bo Beatty, my sidekick Jeremy, and a whole bunch of freaking llamas. Paca llama llama llama. Today uh, we're gonna go over uh, basic care in the winter for your llamas. All right, probably one of the most important things you can do for your llamas in the winter and then all year round is have good water for them. What does that mean? That means that the water needs to be clean. Um, you need to have access to it at all times. It needs to be free choice. And uh, also um, should not have algae and bird baths and moss growing into it. And if you're using tanks, that works. We did that for a long time, but nothing compares to what you can do for your animals as far as their health and care and also as far as saving money and efficiency by putting in these um, drinking post waters and so what happens is um, llamas will push this with their nose you can see some of them use their teeth on it and then this bowl fills up now if the bowl fills too much full it starts to drain on the outside in between the two um, the fiberglass and the PVC bowl right there and then it's got a little drain underneath it. So you can see this slowly starting to drain. Now the llama has the opportunity to drink all the water. And so there's no electricity to heat this. You know, it's 10 degrees today at the end of January, and we're using absolutely no electricity to heat this. There's no heat element. There's no component of heat. Also, there's no standing water. So no moss, no algae, no bird baths. The issue with those things, especially the bird baths, is they bring in parasites for your llamas. And so, by avoiding all those things, we have clean, fresh water, also at the right temperature. Temperature of water is really important. A lot of people don't dive into that for unknown reasons, but having the water that's close to 40, 45 degrees for your animals year round helps their um, <clears throat> digestive tract. They drink more water so they stay healthier and uh, stay hydrated better. And so right temperature of water is really important. So this water is basically ground temperature, which when you put a thermometer here, it's about 42 degrees. And so um, it's awesome. These things are really cool. They pay for themselves, depending on where you live in the country, in roughly four years. And so I think it's definitely worth the initial investment. And if you're just looking at payoff, four to five years to pay these suckers off if you're not using any type of heat. And then also um, time savings, you know. And then your llamas are able to have their water all the time and it's fresh and clean and keeps your animals healthy. So we've used lots of different systems and we have uh, 40 of these on the ranch now. Drinking Post Water. You can reach out to Brad or Mike at Drinking Post Water and they're out of Colorado and these things are just truly amazing. Um, wouldn't go anywhere in the country and raise a llama herd without these things. So number one, make sure your llamas have clean fresh water 24-7. All right, number two, not necessarily because it's in order, but because it's on the list and I'm standing right next to it, is this bad boy, salt block. So this is just simple, cheap, I don't know, $15 trace mineral salt block. And uh, you know, when I started llama ranching, I realized llamas didn't have access to these and they didn't really use them that well. And they are always at them and they spent too much time at them. And that's when I realized that llamas needed more than what I was giving them and they needed it in a different form. And so what we started doing was trying to uh, do better job on our mineral. And so this is loose mineral, kind of looks like sand, and has many different types of mineral and vitamins in it that the llamas need. And over time we started using other suppliers and manufacturers, and then we started just trying to develop our own. And uh, this is where we came up, um, obviously using a lot of other scientists and people's information that have gone before us. And uh, this is, I think, our third style and type that we've worked with over the years and this is by far our best and llamas do the best on it and uh, the multi-mineral is really important it helps so many different things their teeth the way they eat chew life longevity digestion um, the way they're actually able to utilize the free choice um, dry forage that you're feeding them all these things their growth so so many things and you know also all the way down to how well the mothers that you have the females and dams are nursing and so mineral is really important 
and so they kind of get i would say 90 to 95 percent of what they want here and these mineral blocks so we run both and we didn't used to do that and this kind of helps their teeth health you know gives them something kind of hard to chew on if you don't have a lot of shrubs and uh, bushes in your pastures this is really good for their teeth because they'll kind of pick at it chew at it and uh, makes them a little bit stronger and then also sometimes it's all they need and if that's all they need and that's all you should give them so they have free choice to both all the time and uh, it works really well so we got to top this one off real quick Okay, next on the list is having proper shelter. And so we have, uh, this is a two-year-old pen. So we've all got two-year-old males in here and uh, there'll be two in the spring coming up here in a few months. And this is their shelter. So the shel this shelter is 24 by 24. And it has, you know, the roof on it is a 212 pitch and it's a mono truss, so it's just a single slope. And I really like single slope uh, trusses in places like Eastern Idaho because we get so much snow and it, it you know makes it so you in the front where all the animals enter you don't have to worry about there being a bunch of snow that accumulates over the winter and ice and so that's why i like the single slope we do have some a-frame styles but this is by far my favorite and uh, again it's a 212 pitch works pretty well we got a, a 40 pound uh snow load on the trusses and i get asked about shelters all the time and so we've got just a um a tough rib uh, metal panel on the outside they're all green treated six by six post um, they're four feet in the ground and then all of our uh, wall girts are on two foot centers our roof all of our purlins are on two foot centers and we're using all joist hangers and it's not insulated but we did sheet the inside the reason why we sheet the inside is because we have some of the horses that come in here um, now and then when we switch pastures but so the llamas don't fight and kick and hit that metal siding and uh, bend it and so just this better for all the animals protects the building and uh, all the animals will fit in here all 26 of them perfectly you know and there's plenty of space for a few more and so um, it works out really good so having a good shelter and it's only eight feet tall but then uh, obviously the mono truss on the inside goes all the way up to 12 but as far as taking a vehicle or a tractor you have eight foot clearance on this one and so a lot of people ask me all the time is a three-sided shelter enough it definitely is enough again it's 10 degrees today and uh, there's no llamas in this barn. It's sunny, they're all out eating, and it's more than enough. So now it's all about what's inside this thing. Let's go take a look. So, you know, we actually get a lot of questions from new llama owners about the barns. So that's kind of why we sh thought we'd show it to you today. If you guys want to see m more about the barns and structures, um, maybe write in the description below or um, comment below because, uh, yeah, we might be we can show you some of that stuff and maybe it'd be helpful i'm not for sure if it would be or not but just kind of curious so if you have any more questions or would like to see a barn video just uh write us down in the comments below and let us know this is uh maybe our 10th one that we've built at this ranch and uh we're getting better at it <laughs> and uh we self-build them so we've kind of learned along the way some of the best practices of how to do these things so okay next on the list for basic care of llamas during the winter is have some proper bedding and to carry a pocket knife with you. Jeremy, for whatever reason, as manly as he is, look what this guy carries. These little teeny tiny dinky but strong scissors. Look at this, look at this. What do you have to say for yourself, Jeremy? Scissor man. These are large fish and snips. <laughs> I, I take offense to them being called scissors. <laughs> Snips. Scissors are for crafts. So this is barley straw, and uh, the llamas eat quite a bit of it. And because it has so much fiber, not a lot of nutrition, they'll eat it, especially if it's clean. And it really helps them process and digest their food and keep them warm because they have to they have to chew it more than they would a grass hay or an alfalfa hay. And so because they have to chew it more, and it has so much uh, fiber and it's a lot, of, it's a, a very rough and coarse uh, feed. They'll bed in it, eat it, and it really helps them stay warm because they're processing it so their stomach stays warm and then uh, because they're bedded in it. So this uh, repels moisture very, very well where something like uh, grass hay or alfalfa bedding would uh, soak up the moisture. And so the llamas love this, they do well. We're just adding a little bit more into it um, today and bedding is huge. So when it gets really, really cold, just bed heavy. Okay! 
Got him on the run. <laughs> <laughs> From old scissor man over there. Dude, you got my new gloves dirty. Oh. Thanks, buddy. Sure thing. Next on the list, basic care. Llamas in the winter. We're big believers in free choice feed. Um, in the winter months especially. And so we build these uh, feeders. And uh, that way, the feed is always off the ground, so you have less waste, and it's always protected from the snow. All the snow that's on top of this feeder would essentially be going down into your feed, getting it wet, you'd lose your nutritional value, you'd have a lot more waste because your llamas wouldn't eat it, maybe at all, and so you'd have to throw it out. And then uh, this way the llamas get all they need whenever they want, and uh, Sometimes some llamas are easy keepers and get fat, but when llamas are growing and they're in harsh conditions, they just need lots of nutrition. And so we don't restrict them at all. Most llamas will eat about a pound and a half of dry forage like this per 100 pounds of body weight. Most of these guys in here are anywhere between 280 and 330. And so uh, these guys are not quite eating six pounds a day, but they're getting pretty close to that spot where they're eating about six pounds a day. And so when we buy feed, a lot of people ask us, we budget 10 pounds per llama per day. And uh, keep feeding it in these feeders is really helpful. We have all sorts of different feeders that we made. But basically, the, all, the key factor in all of our feeders, regardless of how big they are, is that they're off the ground and they have a roof on them. And that llamas have free access to them. And so this right here, this is like a 80-20 um, mix. It's 80% grass hay orchard and timothy grass with 20% uh, alfalfa. So for these two year olds that have a lot of growing to do, this is about as perfect of a hay mix as we could get. And then that feed over there in the same pasture, that's 100% grass hay. And then they'll pick at the barley straw that we have in the barn. So good, clean, free choice uh, feed and try to keep it off the ground. Well, I see a lot of people feed llamas like you feed cows and they'll just throw the hay on the ground in the same place every day and the llamas have to eat it off the ground. And when they do that, the llamas will, they go to the poop piles and llamas will carry poop on their feet, uh, trace amounts over to where they're gonna eat. Then on top of where they're eating, all their hay will get poop on it, then they'll eat it. And it's just this bad cycle of, of parasite infestation, which is really bad for your llamas. And so I just encourage people not to feed their hay and dry forage in the same spot on the ground no matter what time of year it is so do your best to rotate your pastures keep your hay um, off the ground and uh, you'll save yourself a lot of money by investing some time and some effort into building some type of feeder um, that keeps your hay dry and off the ground last on the list for taking care of your llamas in the winter is uh, supplemental feed it really helps them and so just depending on what's going on with our herd and what time of year it is and especially if they're growing, we'll give these guys about half a pound to a pound of this, um, sometimes during the year, every day, sometimes three days a week, and then sometimes just when it's cold. And again, it varies a lot. And uh, if you have questions about why it varies or what, what we do in different situations, regardless of uh, you know age and um, growth, growth patterns in llamas, just write some comments below. So we're gonna go put this on a spot where uh, the llamas haven't walked too much and uh, we just got so much snow that it's got everything buried up. So all the feed pans are buried, so we're just gonna put it out here on top of this ice rink they're, they're living in. And we're gonna give half a bag to the two-year-old boys and half a bag to the three-year-old boys. So this is our mix. This is kind of what's in it, just to kind of give you an idea. And uh, this mix has been used for, for llamas for a couple decades now. And uh, it's been a really good mix for our llamas and we've really enjoyed it. We actually sell this stuff. And so if you guys are interested in where to find some feed, there's other stuff you can definitely use and buy, especially um, if you're living somewhere besides the West United States. But if you come by Idaho Falls or you'd like to try some of this, 50 pound bags usually run 25 to $26 a bag. and. Uh, the size of the pellets and then what's in them. Um, it's really good supplement for your llamas. So anyway, if you want to buy some, let us know. 
but uh, if not there's some other good options out there that we can uh, share with you guys we'll put that in the description so Okay, that's it for uh, basic care of llama needs in the winter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, we try to do stuff that's uh, somewhat informational for people that are getting into llamas. And uh, just to kind of share some tidbits that we think will help your llama herd be more healthy. And so thanks for following along. Hopefully you guys liked it. And uh, if not, we're still gonna make another one next week. So enjoy, subscribe.